Hey everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the Daydream Rules podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to share this episode with you. I spoke to Sam Wallen again. She's already been on the podcast in episode number 60 and I highly recommend checking that out if you're into writing. And yeah, it's been good to catch up with Sam on the podcast. I really love having second episodes with people this year because... We've already covered the basics and now it's time to go deeper, which I think is a theme this year, isn't it? Like, oh, so much surface stuff has fallen away, which I really love. Um, and so I hope you all enjoy this episode too. A few updates from me. Um, first and most importantly, I'm offering a free Christmas party on Zoom on the 26th 6th of December. Um, I, just, I just want us to be safe. I really do. I really don't want, yeah, I really don't want more people dying. And I know that's really naive, but I feel like offering something free that we can safely do together online for Christmas is kind of something hopeful that I feel I can do. And so we'll meet on Zoom and hang out. We'll do a little check in, maybe some meditation. I'm going to offer some journaling prompts to reflect on the year. I'm going to play some Christmas songs <laughs> and maybe we'll do a little bit of movement and some crafting. Um, I'm going to have a think about it, but do sign up. It's free and it would be great to have you. If you have never been to any of the spaces I facilitate, really gentle and introvert friendly. You don't have to be on video if you don't want to be. Just come as you are, really. Um, if you want some company between now and then, you're also welcome to join the weekly creative space sessions that I offer. They're really sweet um, and they're available to all patrons. And then finally, I've been printmaking a lot more, which is very exciting. If you are following me on Instagram, you might have seen this already, but I made a print called Mady's Times Changes and I'm selling it to raise money for a local food bank. So check that out. There's two more prints at the moment. Um, the other one is called A Spell for Transformation. It has a snake on it. And then there's another one which is like a hand design. And it says my body is my own. And I imagine them like spells that you can put on your wall. Um, they're 11 pounds each. And I ship internationally. What else can I say? Yeah, they're handmade, you know. I made them with um, really lovely thick paper and oil-based ink and then my little hand press here um, after carving some lino blocks which is such a joy and yeah I would really appreciate it if you check them out. I link to both these things in the show notes and if you have any questions let me know and now I'm gonna let you enjoy the episode with Sam. Hey everyone, as you know, I really love interviewing people and I feel like this year there's been a really beautiful mix between speaking to people about their stories and the experience of this year and their practices and doing solo episodes and just reflecting on what's happening. But today I'm talking to Sam Rowland again and Sam has been on my podcast before. I'll find out which episode number that was because I don't know at the top of my head. That's bad prep to be honest. But I highly recommend checking the first episode out as well. Um, I've been working with Sam for many years and we're also in a mastermind together. So we had, had the honor really of witnessing each other through so many different evolutions of our businesses and the way we think and work and practice. And I'm really, yeah, just continuously inspired by how Sam approaches the creative process, specifically around writing, but really about everything in life. And yeah, it's it's always beautiful to check back with people because I feel like the first interview is kind of introduction and an overview and then the second one we can dive a little bit deeper and see what else wants to be shared. So Sam, thank you so much for making time. I'm really excited to talk to you. Hey, thank you, Yara. I'm so excited to, to be here and just be in deeper conversation with you. Thank you. I want to begin with a question that you're really allowed to take in any direction that you like, because it could be small and sweet, but it could also be, you know, big and wild. And I'm, I'm wondering what this year has been like for you and what you're grieving at the moment. Beautiful 
question. Such such a question for for everyone, I think, right now. Um, what has it been like, and what am I grieving at this moment? Um, well, the thing that just comes up as as you ask that, and I tune into that in terms of of the grieving. What I'm grieving is, I think, the connection to the people that I love, like my ability to be with my sister who's very ill, to be with my dad. I usually try to see him you know, at least once a year, if not more, if I can, who's 90, just turned 91. Um, actually, wait, did he just turn 91 or 92? See, he's up there. <laughs> um, who's far away. And yeah, and I think just grieving this sense of my own um, freedom in the world in a particular way but that there's also been gifts in that, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that. But I think I'm just tuned in also a little bit more to grief in my life. Just for example, um, you know, my one of my cats, I have two sweet litter mate cats, and one of them, uh, they're 13 years old, and one of them, she got sick like a week or two ago, and... Um, I had to take her to the vet. It was just a very traumatic day. And then she was better, but now she's just been a little off and um, not quite herself. And I, I have this worry about her. And, and what I think this whole year has invited me to do, and why I'm sharing this example, is that I just am, am tuning into like what, what kind of space does it really take in our lives to just meet the world around us to meet what's around us. So like how much space does it take for me to actually just meet the fact that I'm worried about my cat and grieving the potential of her death, which may or may not be today or tomorrow or anytime soon, but it also could be. And rather than do my normal thing, which would probably be to really try to over control it and plan or try to figure out how to fix it, or even distract myself with a lot of busyness or work or other things. I'm really just giving myself time. Like this morning we sat outside for 20 minutes and I don't usually let her outside. She's an indoor cat, but I just brought her out. She sat on my lap and we just sat together. And I feel like that's been this invitation. This year has been this invitation to just be more present to who is around me that I can connect with and be with in, in a time of grief, whether, you know, she's on her way out or not. And so, yeah, I'm sure I could say a lot more about griefs, but that that's just what's present for me right now. And just part of the practice, I think this year in having to be right where I am and not able to leave <laughs> in many ways is inviting me more deeply into it. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. That makes sense. Um, yeah, and there's so much more there that I'm excited to ask you about. Um, for listeners who didn't listen to the last episode, can you give us kind of an overview of the work that you're doing and maybe also speak to how it has changed this year or maybe I, I feel actually there's always been a richness and depth to your work and there's a real stability in that, but also different things become more important this year, right? So I would love to hear yes. more about that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the work that I'm doing is um, supporting people to go more deeply into their own story through writing. Um, so that's the, the surface level of it um, as a writer and writing coach myself. And, um, yeah, the way... You know, that, that journey for me has always been about a journey. It, for me and the way that I work with with people is to invite them to go on a deeper journey to really discover what wants to be written. You know, I say, write what wants to be written, not what you think you should write. And and how that really is a deeper commitment to um, a writing life, a life of, of 
expression on and off the page or, or on the page that actually really helps you do that more fully even off the page in your life. Um, and so there's a lot to that, you know, the, the foundation of that, that I really been naming more clearly for myself is, is restorative writing or the restorative writing cycle. And I think that anyone who is wanting to really create a deeper relationship and long-term sustainable relationship to, to writing in their life, um, or any creative expression, but I, writing is my modality. Um, it just, you have to understand and get to know your own relationship to the process, like kind of understanding an overview of what are the things you can expect to, to go through as a, as a writer in the writing cycle. Um, but also what is your personal way of doing that? Like what is your own personal process within that bigger structure? And so that's kind of the heart of the work that I do in the group programs that I offer, like my beyond the journal. Um, community writing program as well as with the private work so it, it happens on different levels um but what i'm really you know emphasizing you know getting more clear on this year <laughs> um which i i knew but it's just a deeper understanding of it is how important the the communal witness aspect of it is because what i provide for people basically is a witness to their story and who they are and and reflect back to them what I see and also what they might see for themselves but also what they cannot see for themselves within their own life and story and I do that individually with people but also in the community groups that really is the most profound aspect and process of getting to show up with other people and share and voice your story and not from a place where you're trying to be, you know, a perfected writer or really focus so much on the craft of writing itself. I'm not a craft focused writer. I mean, I, I do bring some of that in and help people with that. But for me, it's really about getting the full expression on the page first, <laughs> generative writing, getting in that flow, even discovering like, what is it that's even there? Like, what are these threads of meaning and purpose that just naturally come through you because they do and you can't always see them for yourself. And that's why so many people want to find their own voice, even though the truth is their voice is actually already coming through them all the time. It's a matter of learning to see and recognize and accepting and feeling the deep essence of what that is. And I, and we cannot do that alone. Like we just can't do that alone. And so the big piece for me right now is is how do we do that together more fully? Like one of the questions that I'm sitting with myself and just thinking about in my own work um, and in my own personal space of writing and that I'm tending to with another person in an event that we're going to be having soon, which I'm sure I'll, I'll speak to at some point here. But is this question of like, um, what kinds of, of space and community can hold, can we show up in and, and can hold the full beautiful and terribleness, <laughs> beautiful terribleness, you know, the whole range of our story and who we are without making us wrong. And that I think is just sort of a question of, of our time in terms of, living in a very divided, you know, I'm in the United States and we definitely are living in a narratively divided place in terms of, of us and them and um, just who we think we are in relation to, to others and other people. And so I'm just curious, like, how do we create spaces to hear the full breadth of someone's story who is, doesn't think like us, who doesn't have the same experience of us? Um, and, and be able to receive and hold that and witness that and not make them wrong and to have that same thing done for us. So that's a big piece of what I'm just wanting to go more deeply into and, and really the intention behind the spaces that I create. Um, and then the other piece to that that I'm really just diving more deeply into is kind of what I'm calling the alchemy of writing or the hidden 
the writing that happens behind the writing. And what I mean by that is when you embark on writing as a place, writing as an act of renewal or restoration or recreation within your self or and within the world, you there's something else happens in that process. And I'm going to be sharing more about this in an, in an event coming up. And, and I'm kind of, it's hard to speak to fully because I'm just in the stages myself of beginning to articulate and name it more deeply. And it's a little bit hard to name as deeply because it's, it's actually what you experience at an invisible level and a physiological level when you write something that wants to be written and something that's probably challenging. Like I've, I've recently been working on a story that I've been trying to write for a number of years in different ways. And I finally, in the space of the, the pandemic and in the space of a, a retreat at home, I, I finally felt, heard the call and it heard my own readiness, if you will, to, to finally write this story in a way that I've been wanting to for a long time in a way that I've been intuiting within myself for a long time, but couldn't do. And as I went through the process of writing the story, and it was kind of a dramatic story um, from when I was young. And so there's, there's some drama to it, but it wasn't so much about the drama of the story, but it was about the process of what happens as I, I wrote it to me and my relationship to myself and myself at the time, which I was nine years old when this experience happened, myself since then and myself now and my future self. It could be because it felt like writing this story was going to, I, I just had this feeling that I had to write it and, and something lived on the other side of it. If that makes sense. And I think a lot of the people I work with actually have that intuition that they know they have to write something. They know it needs to come up and out. They may not know exactly what it is, but they intuit this sense of themselves that lives on the other side of it. And that's the process that I'm really interested in, the process that I've been going through for myself of what lives on the other side of the story and not just to get there, but to kind of go through the experience of the layers that take you there through through the writing process and through the, the story itself. And that part of the process and how that brings healing, I think, to um, you know the emotional, physical body even, and soul, um, is what I'm really diving more deeply into and, and interested in and how that actually, when we do that, we're, we're recreating ourselves and we're actually working to recreate the world around us. And not in this big sort of save the world kind of way, because, you know, the other question I've been asking myself lately is, you know, what if we are, you know, what if I'm not meant to save the world? Because we all kind of, I, I, I love to be of service and I want to make a contribution and I have those thoughts. But the question I'm with right now is what if I'm not meant to save the world, but I'm meant to learn how to allow this frighteningly honest world to save me more fully to save me and so our stories really are what make the world i think we're living i mean in the united states we're just living in this place right now of the story we're telling about who we are what our experience has been is actually creating the reality that we live in and the reality around us so i'm i'm just interested in that and and how to unpack that more. I know I <laughs> traversed a lot of territory there, but <laughs> I think in webs and uh, my work goes in webs. And so this is, there's a lot to, to the question you asked. And so hopefully that conveys um, some of it. It does. And it makes a lot of sense. And it's been a joy to listen to you. Um, for people taking this in and just nodding along as I have, I wonder if you can maybe flesh out what generative writing is a little bit more because that might sound abstract but also really exciting to people. 
Yes, yes. So thinking back to what I mentioned about the restorative writing cycle, like I see that there are, um, it, it, to me, it's, it's the cycle of creation and the restorative writing cycle are one and the same thing. And the primary foundation to that is to bring essence into form. Like that's the heart of what creation is, is to bring some essence into form. And so in the restorative writing cycle, I call that either agenda-free writing or generative writing, which is really just, it's, it's writing to, to write and discover and to see what's there without having an agenda about what it needs to be. Because so often when people sit down to write or they, they know they have a book in them or they know that there's something they want to communicate, they can sit down and then freeze up or get blocked right away because there's this idea of like, well, I need to write something in a certain way or it has to be good or who's my audience and what are they going to think? It's very outcome product, the final product oriented. And I say that nothing will kill, you know, sometimes that works for people, but, but mostly in my sense, especially if people are really, you know, coming to their voice for the first time or after a long absence, we really need that space to simply generate words on the page and then begin to see what's even there, begin to see what arises as a, as a discovery process, and then let that lead us where we need to go. Yes, I was again nodding along and feeling the permission giving in that as well, which is really beautiful. Um, you touched a bit on the story that you were writing about, and just more generally, I would love to hear more about what your writing practice is like at the moment, and if there's any theme that has been emerging, emerging this year, um, or a pattern, or just anything that feels exciting to share about writing, writing in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um... Let's see. So my writing practice, I mean, and it's, this is sort of the thing with it is, you know, my writing practice in terms of what it looks like in how I'm showing up each day goes through phases. And that's just part of my process. Like some people it works to just commit every single day, um, like indefinitely. And when I try to do that, I, I can do that for a certain amount of time, but after a while, I it doesn't work for me, and then I start to go into the place of berating, getting self, you know, self aggressive, <laughs> if you say, for not showing up to something I said I was going to show up to. So for me, um, the foundation of all of it is is that sense of the freedom that I mentioned. So if I'm going to commit to a daily, you know usually what I do is, is phases. Like, so for example, I did a retreat for myself, um, in September and it was two weeks long. I needed that time to just step away. The only commitment I made around that time for myself was to do 20 minutes of writing each day. So that one was a daily commitment and to, and that opened my day and then closing my day with, with 20 minutes of meditation. And that was the only structure I gave myself. And I had the freedom within it to do whatever else I wanted, read, rest, nap, walk, be in nature, all those things, which to me actually are, are a very critical part of my, my writing practice because I don't feel very connected or I, I'm not able to make as deep of contact with myself if I don't have room, room in my life. And if I don't have time to just to not write also as well as write, if you will. So, so for that period, I did show up each day and then I often was, did well beyond 20 minutes. So I often was writing, um, you know, throughout the day and really coming back in those, in that space I created for myself, coming back to, to remembering, you know, how much for me writing is how I just ground and orient myself in my own life. And how deeply important that is for me, even if I'm not writing something specific, because 
to me, there's, there is a distinction. Like writing is writing is writing. And I always used to think there was real writing versus the writing I did. And I was trying to figure out how to do the real writing that was the good writing that got published. <laughs> and I, I, I don't think that way anymore. And I, I help others to not approach it that way. But there is a distinction between that generative writing that I was talking about and then working to develop your writing into something more specific, like a book or an article or a poem. Um, and for me, what that process looks like is if I'm not doing that agenda free generative writing consistently, even if it's not every single day, I have a much harder time moving to, to going beyond that, to developing that into something else I might actually want to share in the world in some way to make public, which is, you know, what the root of the word publish means is to just make public <laughs> in some form. And so you, you know, for me, I need time for both. And I just listen to myself for when those times are. Um, so after I did all that writing on my retreat and was writing, you know, 20 minutes or more every single day, I was able to tap into listening, like I said, and hearing that it was time to write this other story. And so once I actually came out of that retreat, I started to work on the story. And then I committed in that one to, to at least touch base with that story every day for 30 minutes. I wasn't always writing, but it for I would show up and sit there for half hour or just connect to it, read what I'd written, you know, just be in the space of the story and also be with what comes up around that. I, I, I kind of made my story my beloved, if you will. I, I really did. And I was actually writing letters to the story <laughs> as I was writing it, asking it to show me what it wanted from me and, and also to tune into the fact that it was asking more from me than I actually wanted to give at times. There were times where I was just like, why do I want to keep writing the story? Like, why is it important? I've tried several times, like just that space of feeling thwarted in my own expression and my own understanding. And so I really, that was the most powerful practice that I had around writing this piece. It wasn't the writing itself, but it was actually being in conversation with the story itself and what the story represented to me and held for me because that's the power that we have to make meaning of ourselves in our own lives and for me this was a memoir you know based piece a, a, a true story experience that I've gone through but I think this is even true of someone's writing fiction or something else because because fiction and from what I heard I don't write fiction myself but from what I hear of people who do these characters like appear <laughs> and they kind of don't go away until you listen to them. You know, these stories come through. And so it's, I think it's sort of the same thing. Like they come, I, Liz Gilbert talks about this in big magic. Like there's this spirit that comes to you that you have to connect to and be in relationship with. And if you, you have to make room for that. And that that to me is the power because within that is how I discovered the meaning that I wanted to hold and support and nurture for what this story is to me right now in my life, if that makes sense. And that's a part of the practice. Yeah. Yes, that does make sense. Thank you. And I think everything that you shared around the writing practice and how we relate to the outcome of our writing and how beautiful it is if we, can release ourselves from some of those expectations that makes so much sense and I I can see you know I can witness that in you but I also wonder if maybe there's some practical starters that you can share with people if they are also in the space of feeling like well there's you know what I do in my journal and then there's the real writing and how I how do I get from A to B and kind of misunderstanding that to be a linear journey where do we how do we allow ourselves to go off that path and and how do you even start if you're not given a map really or a compass how do you live out your own compass yes so you're asking sort of for some practical things on how to move from 
from more of the journal writing to something else? Is that the basis of the um, Yeah, I guess, um, I guess you so beautifully described kind of how you allow yourself to be in your own rhythm and your own time and process and to get away from this thinking that there's your journal writing and then this the real writing. And mm-hmm. I guess I think we all found, find ourselves in that headspace every now and then, no matter how long we've been practicing our own own thing and so when you find yourself in that space now is there something that helps you kind of remember yourself and your intention and to step on your own path again yeah I mean let's see I want to to make this practical so in speaking again to that writing cycle the restorative writing cycle as I call it which I'll just name those stages that for First stage is the agenda free writing, that generative stage, which which could simply be journal writing, but I will speak to taking that a step further in a moment, which I think is what you're asking about. The second element, and again, I'm I'm naming this linear, linearly, but we we inhabit it simultaneously and at different uh, it's not a linear process, but it I can it can be and it sort of is to some degree but we can also be inhabiting different layers of that um, simultaneously. So there's the agenda-free writing, the generative writing. There's this sense of identifying your voice. Um, And then there's developing your work and then finding like an audience or that place of community and connection and witness that I was speaking about. And again, to me, this correlates with the cycle of creation, which is to bring essence into form, that generative writing, Honoring and receiving its uniqueness, listening to like what it's there to say, and that's identifying your voice. Then growing and developing that, supporting it to become fully itself in the world, the development of your work. And then the final piece of finding your audience is is becoming fully visible with its gifts in the world. So it's it it is a birth and a growth process. So just seeing all of your writing in that way and that each piece is going to be in its own stage of that. Sometimes you'll go through that very quickly. So an example I like to give is when you write a haiku or a short poem, which I did, you know, now that the pandemic is on, I'm not doing this, doing this anymore, at least for parties and in public, I was going out and being, you know, at events where I would write free haiku for people. Um, and so in the space of five minutes, I would meet somebody, talk to them, tune into what it was they wanted to express or what was really going on for them in their lives, and then write a haiku, give it to them, you know, read it to them, give it to them, and off they went. And so that was like this microcosm of the creative practice of intuiting an essence of something you know, writing, I'd write a few notes and get a little few words coming. And then I would, which, you know, would kind of identify what is the language and voice. And then I would develop it. I'd write a haiku and then I give it back to them. So it was this, that whole thing happened within a very short space. And that was good for me to go through that whole completion cycle because I have to do it fast. I can't think too hard and I can't judge it too much. And then boom, it's off in the world and I never have any control over it again. Um, so that's like a microcosm. So the macrocosm is like you're kind of always in those various stages. But the key is for getting lost and finding your way back is to know that you need time for each of those things. So when you do your generative writing or your journal writing, often, you know, and I still I do this, but, you know, you write something and it's full and it just goes on the shelf and you don't really come back and you look at it again. Um, when you stop and give yourself room as part of your practice to go back and look at what you've written, to look in your journal, and generally even after some time's gone by, it helps, you know, the longer the better sometimes because you can, you come back to it fresh and you might pull something out and read it and be like, oh wow, like you feel like somebody else wrote it. You don't even remember writing it and you read it and you, you're almost like a a reader to yourself and you don't have those judgments about whether it's good or bad or, or it hits you and you're just like, wow, that's great. <laughs> it's powerful. Did I write that? You know? Um, and so giving yourself room to come back. So, 
you know, in this, in my Beyond the Journal program, I have people do that kind of in the stages over the course of the program where we spend a lot of time doing generative writing. And then at some point, you know, it's like you keep your generative writing practice, but then you begin to build into your practice time to come back and look over. What do you even have there? When you read something again, how do you, what do you hear in it? What do you see? Are there things that are repeating themselves? Um, Cause there usually are either stories or ideas or themes or things like that. And then you start to listen to like, what's still calling you? What still feels like it has a charge to you? And, and noting that and realizing like, okay, well, I realize I want to develop maybe this free write into it feels like it wants to be something else. Maybe it wants to be a poem. So then you make, you're making sure then at some point you're, you're spending some time with that free write and beginning to pull the poem out that lives there and, and playing with it and hearing what it has to say. And then, you know, once you get to the point of maybe you wrote your whole poem, like I did with the haiku, you're ready to then share that in some way. And, and again, this is the key part, because I feel like people, we don't get the fulfillment and the, and the satisfaction that we're really seeking from just journal writing, because if we feel called to something more, because it needs to then be received in the world. It needs to have a sense of witness and reception in the world, and it needs to be shared. I really believe, because that's part of what completes the whole cycle, because in that place, it's a completion point where you've expressed something, you've stood in the ground of your expression, you allow the world to receive it, and then you, you let it go, and you also are open to receiving the response of the world that comes back to you from your very essence you know from what you've shared if you're becoming in that process is also part of the world's becoming because you're you're sharing something that no one else can share in the way that you share it and that's important so i don't know if that totally answered your question but <laughs> <laughs> no it did it really did i was seeing a lot of birds flying around as i was listening to you and Again, I just love so much how you're giving people permission and how you're making the process so touchable and also make it an invitation that people really can make their own. I think this um, spiral kind of looks different for everyone. It also becomes stronger and more powerful every time we go through it. So I'm really excited just for more people to step into that space um, this year. I think all around me, people have been feeling more called to make things and write and make that art and that really gives me hope so that's great and yeah. it also is a good bridge to ask you what you have coming up in your practice and how can people work with you if they want to or just want to learn more yes yes um well the first thing which i, I didn't speak to in your last question is i do i have a free gift which is the one word exercise the start with one word power of the word exercise that i and my signature exercise. And you can um, get that as my free gift at samanthawallen.com forward slash free gift. And that, that's, that to me is the practice that still keeps the agenda free writing space open, but begins to give a little sense of form to your work um, than just the journal writing, because you invite a word and you let that word take you and often the words that begin to emerge are part of the whatever deeper story it is you're you're headed towards um, and it helps you access that in a different way so there's that piece um i do have i mentioned the upcoming um event that i'm doing which is on december 3rd and that's called um the role of your voice and story in recreating our world and I'm, it's going to be, it's a story reading. I'm actually going to read the story that I've been speaking about, the one that I worked on um, recently and just completed. And I'm going to read and share that and then be in conversation with um, a wonderful friend and mentor and soul guide named Debs DeVries. And we're going to be just talking more deeply about this process. So I'm going to share my story and my own process and talk more about what this process really is and what that looks like. And she's going to be bringing in some pieces about the, um, 
body's relationship and what happens in the body. And um, you can get on, come join us for that. Again, that's free um, at samanthawallen.com forward your voice, your voice and story forward slash your voice and story. It's, it's on the front page of my website as well, too, if, you, if you're interested. And then um, I'm having my Beyond the Journal program, which is basically all about what we just were talking about. Um, that begins in January, and I have the, the enrollment is open for that right now. And um, again, like that program, so it starts in January, goes through April. We have like two-hour weekly live sessions. Um, but that program is designed to take you through this whole process of the restorative writing cycle and just give you the context for all of that, including writing exercises and prompts and all of those pieces um, so that you really can begin to develop that relationship to your own process and really understanding what your own process is within that cycle and getting to do that in community. And I just changed, you know, I was calling it the group coaching program, but I just changed the title to it to the beyond the journal community writing experience. Cause that that's, that's really what it is. Um, and we'll be doing a lot of writing and sharing together in community. And that's really, I think the powerful aspect, um, you know, along with establishing just your own understanding of your process. Cause the goal of all of it is any time we always leave and go away from our, our practices. <laughs> like, you know, the, the key is, is finding our way back and, and to keep coming back and to really build that, that muscle. And I think having structures like this group program and the community really help you do that in a way that you just can't do by yourself. So and that one is um, samanthawallen.com forward slash beyond the journal. It actually does the word program in there. Sure. We will yeah, definitely beyond the journal program, yes. Yeah, we'll link to that in the show notes as well. So if people haven't caught that, it will definitely be there and they can check it out. And I'm really excited for them. Yeah, and there's course private work with me right now as well too. Um, I'm, I'm, that would be a wait list for that right now because I'm, I'm full on, on private work, but um, that's an option as well that you can read about on the website, which is just getting more individualized support for this bigger yeah. process of whatever you're working to, to write and create. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much, Sam, for yeah. sharing so much of yourself and your process and offering inspiration and encouragement. It was really, really good to talk to you again. Thank you, Yara, so much. I so appreciate being here and just the space you hold and the conversations you're in and the work you're doing in the world as well. Thank you. <laughs>